This is Costa Rica. And so is this, and so is this. Oh, this is crazy. We're Jamie and Skylar, and we recently spent eight days road tripping in this ridiculously beautiful country. And while Costa Rica may be small, it's absolutely huge on adventure, with countless hikes, waterfalls, beaches, and views packed in a country the size of West Virginia. We spent our eight days in Costa Rica trying to see as much of it as possible. And in this video series, we're gonna take you along for the ride, from the scenic highs to the terrifying lows. Three. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And everywhere in between. This bridge doesn't even have rails on it. The first day of our Costa Rica adventure began at the Orlando airport, where we'd be boarding a direct flight on Spirit Airlines to Costa Rica's capital and by far its largest city, San Jose. Now Spirit gets a bad rap from some people because it's a budget carrier, the cabins aren't the most spacious, and you don't get an included carry-on bag or drinks and snacks. But we got our flights with Spirit for just around $220 round trip per person, and we usually have pretty good luck with them. And this flight was no exception, as we boarded on time and touched down in San Jose around 20 minutes before our scheduled arrival time. As you can probably tell, I was pretty excited to be back in Costa Rica. So after around a two and a half hour flight from Orlando and about 40 minutes in customs, we are now waiting for our shuttle to pick up our rental car and then we'll be on the road. Now while we show you a bit of footage driving through San Jose, we want to point out that we reserved our eight day rental car ahead of time through Priceline for just over $220. Hey, I'm happy with our ride. We did have to pay an additional $200 or so for liability insurance as our GEICO policy did not cover rental cars abroad. We did not have to purchase collision insurance though as we booked the car using our Chase business card which has built-in collision coverage, a pretty amazing feature which has saved us a lot of money. Budget did initially try to give us a two-wheel drive vehicle, but after pointing out that we had clearly paid for a four-wheel drive SUV, they did give us a vehicle with all-wheel drive which as you'll see later would really come in handy. Getting out of the city. Yeah, you gotta watch out for those speed bumps though. <laughs> Thankfully, we made it out of San Jose before dark, but our adventure didn't end there as we'd still have around 40 miles of narrow mountain roads to get to our first Airbnb. Okay, so we're stopping because we have to wait for traffic to come through this bridge. But in typical Costa Rica fashion, even while waiting in nighttime traffic, we had a waterfall view. <laughs> After a slow two-hour drive through some less than ideal driving conditions, we finally reached our country Airbnb, which made us feel right at home. But before hitting the bed, we made a quick drive to nearby Venecia to grab some groceries at Econo Mas and perhaps the best fast food chicken we've ever tasted at Poyolandia. Alright, Jimmy, you want to talk about how good this chicken is? Twelve pieces of this chicken cost us six dollars and sixty cents, plus this drink. Mm -hmm. Great deal. Good morning guys, it's our second day here in Costa Rica. It's 5.30 in the morning, which is much earlier than we normally get up. But as you can see, it is very much daylight already. And since the sun sets at around five o'clock in the evening here, we gotta get our days going early. Now we're eating a couple of the pastries that we got from the grocery store last night for breakfast, as well as some instant cappuccino because we knew we'd be on the road the day before the coffee shops opened. And we didn't know if our Airbnb would actually have a coffee machine or not. Now we don't know what either of these are called, but we asked the staff working what their favorite was and they chose this one. And then we also chose this one because it looked like it might have caramel in it. We're gonna try the staff favorite first. Very good. Oh, let's see what's inside. Very flaky. It's sweet, but it's very good. How cute is this place? It's too bad we can't stay here a few more days. Skylar's locking it up so we can head out. Bye, little house. All right, here we go. If you're enjoying this video so far and want to see many more Costa Rican adventures and more Costa Rican dogs, be sure to subscribe to our channel. It is day two here in Costa Rica and we are now two for two for arriving in Costa Rica and having to drive in the dark, in the rain to our Airbnb. And in the mountains. And in the mountains. But we made it and we cannot wait to show you more of this beautiful country.
Our Sunday morning drive had us heading southbound towards the Poas Volcano, a nearly 9,000 foot active volcano which has erupted 40 times since 1828. Along this drive, we found a sign for a different waterfall at nearly every turn, but we had one particular destination in mind, and that was Cascadas Pozo Azul, a group of several waterfalls, including the largest waterfall located within the Bajos del Toro region, which is known for being one of the most remote and beautiful areas of Costa Rica. After a few miles of driving down some pretty sketchy but extremely beautiful roads, we were ready for the first of many big adventures on this trip. Now, as you can see, there are a ton of waterfalls on this property here. Now, we have limited time today, though, so we're going to focus on getting to the last waterfall because we know we want to make it there. And then along the way back, we'll show you as many as we can. Oh my gosh, I already got mud on myself. It didn't even look like it was that muddy, but I guess it is. Looks like there's more restrooms and changing rooms. Just a short walk from the reception area. And they also have these cabins. You can hear people down there. I think that's the first waterfall. There might be a slide down that way. I'm sure Skylar will want to go down on the way back. On the way back. If yep. We got time. All right. So from my research, it sounds like you can easily spend an entire day here. And I already see why. We've already passed trails to probably three or four different waterfalls. Each of them seem to require a little bit of a hike. So if you want to visit every one of the waterfalls on this property, I can see why you could easily spend an entire day here. So the wide grassy path has now turned into a more narrow rocky path that goes into the forest. The stairs have started. I did read that coming back up these stairs is the hardest part of the whole trail. I think we're really thankful for these hiking sticks right now because these stairs are muddy and there's a lot of them. So the sticks definitely going to help us stay upright and hopefully save our knees as well. What is that thing across the river? <laughs> Do you get to go on that? Yep. What? <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so excited. As you can probably tell, I did pretty much all the planning on this trip. And I think Jamie's going to be in for a lot of surprises. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. <laughs> so Skylar just informed me that we're going to get to go across the river on this thing. Uh, it's you, not that far of a fall. Oh my gosh. Rate. Now you can also go down there and walk across on the rocks, but you know, we're going to do this. All right, get in. Oh my gosh. Are we going to do it together or just Yeah, time? no, together. Together? Yeah, we could do it one at a time. And that might be kind of cool. Okay, we'll do it one at a Hang time. On, I'm not, I'm not in here yet. Oh my gosh. Piece of cake, right? I don't know, we'll see whenever I'm over the middle part of it. Can you go faster, please? Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy it. I think we both could have fit in here, but it would have been a tight fit. All right, so I am stopped in the middle over this river. Here's a view from my little basket on one side. There's Skylar over there recording something. And there's the other side of the river. And now I gotta pull myself over there. This is a pretty cool surprise. I had no idea that we'd be able to do this out here today. Obviously Skylar knew and he was keeping it a secret. Okay. It does get a little hard at the end. All right. I am out and now it's going back over and I pick up Skylar. He's gonna be much faster than I was. Oh look, he made it. It was a nice ride, huh? With the river crossing behind us, it was time to hike the rest of the way to the furthest waterfall, which unfortunately meant climbing up and down a lot more stairs. Because we're here in November, it's like the end of the rainy season. Everything is so green. All these rocks are just full of moss. Just so you guys all know, this is what the stairs you gotta deal with look like. They're pretty good stairs. Some of them are taller than others and they're definitely wet and muddy, but going up them I'd say is much safer than coming down because coming down you have the slip wrist. I would say they're not too physically taxing. Just take your time and be careful on the mud to make sure you don't fall. So we made it to the big lookout point, which makes me think we are pretty close to the big falls already. We'll find out soon. Uh, Oh, leaf cutters? Yeah. Okay. 
You can probably see a lot of moving leaves down there. That's because they're being carried by ants, which I believe are known as leaf cutters. We do remember from our last time in Costa Rica that these ants definitely do bite and you do not want to walk through them. So if you see these guys, make sure you step over them. We made it to the bottom of all of these stairs and hopefully no more stairs till the last waterfall. I think there's gonna be some more. You think so? Yeah. Are we almost there yet? We gotta be close. We can't go down too much further, can we? So eventually the stairs did seem to end, but as you can see, it's more just natural stairs now. A lot of rocks and roots, but the good news is, I'm not sure if you can hear, but the waterfall's getting pretty loud, so we're thinking we're close. All right, we seem to have made it to some sort of clearing now. I hope that means the waterfall's close. Jamie is not as optimistic as I am, but I think it's right around the corner. You see it? Yeah. Awesome. Ah, uh, that's the tallest waterfall we've ever seen in person by far, yeah. right? I know you're probably beginning to question it for a while, but what I do was. you think? Worth it? Yeah, worth it. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. Can you just feel that mist? Yep, this is what we came here for. At 508 feet tall, the Catarata Cayeta Nieve y Paz was easily the tallest waterfall we'd seen in Costa Rica. But just a few days later, we'd visit one that was even taller, so make sure to tune in to our future Costa Rica episodes so you don't miss that adventure. This is a massive waterfall. Skyler went down a little bit closer to the waterfall. Skyler looks so tiny compared to this giant waterfall. But I'm hanging out here just enjoying the mist from the falls. I will go down and join him shortly though. This is what Skylar lives for. Look at that waterfall. So I came down to where Skylar was and now I am getting pretty wet. I just wanted to make it here and touch the water. And he got even closer to the fall, so I think he's probably gonna be soaked. Ooh. Really wet here, but pretty freaking cool view. I can already tell watching him come back that he is soaked. So we started this day not even knowing for sure if we'd be able to come to this waterfall because we did pass a sign saying that it was closed on Sundays. Thankfully it wasn't though and that sign may be part of the reason why we actually have this place all to ourselves. And as you can see, it is massive and it is awesome. Now the hike here was pretty challenging and I was beginning to question whether or not it was worth it. This hike was a lot of work, but it's definitely worth it. But as soon as I saw this waterfall, I knew it was. Now I'm not sure, but I think where we went across the river on that cart is just past where that waterfall starts. All right, we'll see you at the top. Taking a quick break, getting mentally prepared for these stairs. There's They're a lot steep, of them. Yeah. <laughs> After a few minutes of exhausting, mostly uphill hiking, we arrived at the Miradores, a great spot to snap a few photos. All right, we made it back to the little stream crossing here which is 155 meters from the waterfall. And it looks like back there, we're thinking is the lookout. Hopefully we can see the top of the waterfall from, we'll see. I'd say this is the top of the waterfall. Now, if this hike is a little too challenging for you, you won't be able to see the waterfall from the bottom, but as long as you're not afraid of heights, you will be able to see it from the top. The cart is occupied coming over, so we're taking this route back. They got three people in there? Really testing the weight limits of that cart. All right, we've got some more waterfalls to show you. And we're happy to inform you that the remaining waterfalls were all much easier to access. And while none of them compared in size to our first waterfall stop, they still had plenty to offer, including a spot for Skylar to get in his shower for the day. With two stops down, it was time to move on to number three, which offered a smaller waterfall and a nice calm spot for swimming. And for those who are a little more adventurous, it's here that you can also do some cliff jumping, an opportunity which Skylar can never pass up. 
All right, this is a little bit scary. Sure. With the first of several cliff jumps on this trip in the books, it was time to move on to waterfall number four. So this is another pool that you can swim in. Like we said earlier, you could stay here all day if you wanted to. So there is a water slide, but as you can see, there's not a whole lot of water flowing down it. And it's also made out of concrete. Looks more painful than fun, I think. I know, I didn't think it would be good for my back. <laughs> we got more waterfalls still today. We got a big hike tomorrow. And this looks like it could be a potential tailbone injury, so... Yeah, we're gonna pass. <laughs> Going on to the next spot. Our final waterfall at Cascadas Pozo Azul was the smallest of the five, but also the closest to the entrance. And while it was a beautiful and calming spot, we were starting to get a bit tired and hungry, so it was time to be on our way. So just as we finished our waterfall hikes, it started raining. Our timing couldn't have been much better. Now the food that they're cooking at this place does smell amazing, but I think we're gonna head a little bit down the road towards our next waterfall destination. Oh my God! Ah! And try to find some food along the way. I think the sign that said it was closed Sunday was for Blue Falls and not the actual waterfall that we just came from. So, makes a lot more sense to us now. Yeah. <laughs> can't go to Blue Falls on Sunday, but you can go to Azul. What's the one we went to? It was like the Azul, I don't know, I'll have to look up the name of it. The one we went to had Azul in the name, which also means blue, right? So yeah. easy to mix them up. While we may have been quite confused about where we had come from, we did know exactly where we were going, at least for our next stop. So it's still raining. We decided to stop off at this coffee shop that we passed by on our way to the next waterfall. And we have a view of the volcano. It is so pretty up here. Ready for coffee? Although there weren't many options for coffee in this remote area of Costa Rica, the reviews for this spot were good, and almost anything would be better than the instant cappuccino we had earlier in the morning. Our first real Costa Rican coffee of the trip. What do you think? It was good, yeah. Better than our cappuccino this morning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Since we can't survive on coffee alone, we decided to order some traditional Costa Rican casados too, which came out looking amazing and tasting even better. Well, for now, it is only sprinkling. We are gonna head out to our next waterfall and we'll see what the conditions are like when we get there. So it is now pouring down rain. Timing worked in our favor today. Cause yeah, if we would have been at the bottom of that waterfall and still had to hike up all of those muddy Look stairs. Look at that road. You see it up there? Oh yeah, there it goes I do. Straight up, up oh there. my gosh. Ooh, pothole. Yeah. Going over a bridge. I think that we're probably driving up that road, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, sure that looks straight up. up. Mm -hmm. yeah. While driving through the Costa Rican mountains can be a bit intimidating, it can also be a whole lot of fun, provided you have a four-wheel drive vehicle with good ground clearance and are not in any sort of hurry. Would you drive in the Costa Rican mountains or would you stick to buses and taxis? Let us know in the comments. This bridge doesn't even have rails on it. It doesn't. What's Tusca de Truches? I don't know. Want to see? No. That way. I don't know that I want to find out. I don't even know what any of those words mean. While Skylar uses our Google Translator, I want to show you this bridge again that we have to drive over. It has absolutely no railings. We gotta figure out what Pesca de Truchas means. Oh, just like a, like a fish farm maybe? Trout fishing. All right, I say we can probably skip, <laughs> we can skip it. We can skip the trout fishing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can skip the. All right, no trout, trout fishing. fishing for us, I guess. All right, well, we'll let's try go to back. See if we can find another waterfall instead. Let's go back over this bridge <laughs> carefully, please. All right, so this next waterfall stop, Skylar has GPS coordinates. Sometimes those are great. Sometimes those lead us to who knows where. So. <laughs> Stick around to find out <laughs> where we're going. At least we got two hours before it gets dark. Yeah, we've, we've got time and it's only supposed to be two minutes away. 
Oh, back to the rocky road. All right, here we go. From concrete to rocks. Uh. <laughs> we ready for some wiggling around. So we are currently turning around. So these coordinates, I guess, led us to a farm. <laughs> There's no sign of this waterfall anywhere. This Where? is the road I've ever seen in my life and there's <laughs> this farm at the end of it on the side of a volcano. It was pretty cool. The drive was very pretty but quite muddy and bumpy but still Skyler loves driving around on these roads. The more remote the better. Oh this is crazy. I don't think we've ever come across this before. Hi. You never know what you might see. Back Go road, on. mountain driving, and Costa Rica. Yep. Oh my gosh, it makes me so nervous! Holy crap! Thank goodness for Skylar, we would like never go to any of these places because I'd be so nervous to drive over them. <laughs> I would see it and just be like, all right, we're turning around. <laughs> Even when it's raining, it's so pretty here. Look! Oh, Pesca de Trucha, <laughs> not a waterfall. I don't know why it was a pole on it when it's trapped Look, there, there's another sign over there and that one has a fish. Oh, right? yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. All right, well, you wanna just go right? So at this point, we're pretty much just driving around aimlessly. Basically, we just decided we'd keep driving down this main road to hit one of the other waterfalls up, but then we saw a sign for a national park, and it looked like the road to the national park also led into the mountains, and we thought it'd be cool to check out. So we went from following GPS coordinates to just following signs on the road. <laughs> we're about to find out if these signs are even accurate. I don't know if you can tell how bumpy it is. I don't know, is it gonna lead us to a national park? What do you think? I mean, that's what the sign said. That is what the I sign mean, we said. we might be in the national park. I haven't seen a house for like two miles. Right, but there also have been absolutely no other signs. It looks like the road ends ahead, so <laughs> we'll let you know what we find. All right, so this led to a sign that said camping and volcano views. Yeah. The map doesn't show that there's even a road here, so. <laughs> we probably shouldn't take it. Really? I kind of want it though. I know you do, but gosh, without a little bit more planning, we're probably gonna have to turn around. So GPS coordinates we struck out following random signs we struck out. <laughs> I don't think we struck out on either of them actually. <laughs> they were not where we planned on going. Exactly. But... I'm not saying that we still didn't have a good time, but they didn't get us to where we thought we were gonna go. <laughs> so many waterfalls already. I'm honestly not even that excited about going and seeing one, especially in the rain. It's yeah, like, well, let's go do something else. We found another waterfall. <laughs> this one's not quite as big or as pretty. While we had to give up on waterfall chasing for this day, we weren't too disappointed as we knew we had several more waterfall adventures ahead of us, all of which will be included in our future Costa Rica episodes. And if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on them, be sure to subscribe to Exploration and turn the notifications on. So I think we decided that we are going to head towards our Airbnb because it's almost a two hour drive. And if something pops up along the way that draws us in, then we'll stop. I think this sign is a pretty accurate depiction of Whoa. these roads. They're definitely oh going gosh. into the clouds. I thought we were at the top of the volcano and then we just <laughs> continued to go straight up for like another two miles. Wow, like we are in a cloud. There are these mountain cows out here. That's crazy to see them. I'm not even driving, but I'm like tensing all my muscles just because of the driving conditions. So thank you for driving, otherwise we would never get to see any of these places. Look at this cow! I mean, how do you get up here? <laughs> so the fog finally cleared up just long enough to get this view from the side of the road. Look at that. Wow. Even cloudy and 
Now after 4 p.m. and only around an hour before sunset, we'd have to get moving to avoid having to drive through San Jose in the dark, because as much as we love driving through the Costa Rican countryside, we hate driving through San Jose. I always forget how much I love driving in these mountains, whether it's Costa Rica or Puerto Rico or somewhere else in the crib. Holy cow! Oh yeah. That was close. In 200 meters, continue straight. Due to the less than ideal driving conditions and a couple of traffic jams, we didn't make it to our Airbnb before dark, but we did make it there in one piece. So we ended up stopping by a grocery store and grabbing these taco things out of the freezer. We decided we'd just come here and cook them up because honestly, we were a little excited about getting here and we'll show you why after we're done eating. We did pretty good. Taquitos were a good decision. Mm -hmm. So this is why we were really excited to get to our Airbnb because it has a view of San Jose, but that does mean we had to go through San Jose traffic, which can be crazy, but it was totally worth it. And I think in the morning, we're probably gonna have a view of some mountains over there. Good morning. We woke up to all sorts of nature sounds, birds, chickens, dogs, and this view of the mountain. Skyler says that's the one that we're going to be hiking today. That looks pretty high. When we got up this morning, you could see the peak, but already the clouds have moved in. And over here is a view of the city. We pretty much booked this Airbnb for this view. But after we got here and saw how nice it was for $50 a night, we kind of wish we were staying a few more days. But once again, we're going to have to get going early for a hike. We good to head out? Yep. Do it. All right. See you later, buddy. <laughs> Our third day in Costa Rica started off in search of the trailhead to Pico Blanco, our starting point for our hike to the nearly 8,000 foot high peak. Once again, we were relying on GPS coordinates, which led us down another bad road to another pretty remote area. So we drove up this crazy road and we talked to a nice woman up there who said that we can park our car here. Thank goodness though that Skylar has that translator app. So we do think some people will probably drive further up on this road, but I'm glad we didn't try it. Oh yeah, look at this area here. It's pretty rough. So we were a little bit bummed that we didn't find walking sticks at this trailhead like we did on our hike yesterday, but it didn't take us too long of hiking up this trail to find some pretty good ones on the side of the path. So we are about half a mile into our hike to Pico Blanco. It's a five and a half mile loop trail, and depending on who you ask, it's either moderately difficult or very difficult, probably depending on your experience level and also the conditions of the trail, how muddy it is and how much it has been raining that day. So we did just meet a mountain bike biker on this path. He didn't speak any English, but we could understand that he said Pico Blanco was that tall peak straight in front of us. So we're definitely on the right path. We are in the end of rainy season right now, but it seems that it stays pretty dry in the morning generally. And then sometime in the afternoon, you do get some pretty heavy rains. We're starting this hike just a little after 8 a.m. and it's supposed to be a four hour hike or so. So that would put us back around noon and hopefully we'll beat the rains. We definitely do not want to be hiking down the mountain when it's pouring rain. So this part of the trail, about two thirds of a mile in, is actually downhill and concrete. So we're definitely making some pretty good time through this section. And we got a pretty amazing view over there as well. So this section of the hike around three quarters of a mile in is so beautiful. You got country views to the right and city views to the left. Both are equally scenic. All right guys, we are about a mile into the hike now and here's the view we got of the city. We're getting a little higher and the views are getting a little better. And even looking straight forward is really beautiful. We just love this trail so far. And there's Jamie way ahead of me because I've been stopping to take shots of the scenery and she is trying to maintain a pace, which is probably a good idea. So we've come to our first fork here. This is the path that we have to go down. And to the left is another little trail. We have no idea where that goes. All right, we've encountered our first almost straight up section. Now it is starting to feel like a hike. Definitely some really steep spots, a lot of clay. You can tell it's rained pretty recently, but it's not super slick. It would definitely get slick real quick if it were to start raining though. So keeping our fingers crossed that the rains hold off today. 
Now, those of you who know our channel know that typically Jamie does talk a lot more in our videos, but she is just focused on keeping up a good pace on this trail. And I do not blame her because we do not want to be coming back in the rain. Jamie, mile and a half in, what are you thinking of the hike so far? It's a little more challenging than I expected it to be starting off. We haven't even made it to the loop yet. As you can tell, I am definitely pretty out of breath too. So I can't say it's not challenging, but also we are trying to keep a really good pace. So I'd say we're hiking a little faster than we normally would and we're filming. So the combination of trying to hike fast and filming along the way definitely makes it a little harder. Makes you burn a little more energy than you probably would otherwise. I'm still enjoying it though. You do definitely want to wear your best hiking shoes on this hike because you will want that extra grip. Jamie also does recommend a hiking stick and I think I agree with that. So Skylar has led us to the loop trail where we have to decide to go left or right. All trail says it's better to go left. If you keep going left, it's a much more direct route to the top of the mountain. But if you just want the easiest way and you don't care about seeing the whole loop, you could take the right route up and back down. And if you just really like to torture yourself, I suppose you could take the left route up and down. So far, the first section of the actual loop portion of the trail is very narrow, a little overgrown, not too bad though. Definitely a little bit muddy, not too slick yet. Overall, not too bad. All right, we've reached a little bit of a clearing here. Looks like we'll have some views off to the left. We're probably about a mile and two thirds into the hike now. As you can see, we got some more great views of San Jose and the trail's actually leveled out a little bit. Yeah, hopefully we can really make some good time through this section because we know there's going to be much harder and slower sections coming up. Now, as we continue to make our way towards the top of Pico Blanco, we do want to mention another reason that we were really trying to complete this hike quickly, and that's because we'd be driving all the way to Uvita after the hike, and we really wanted to take the scenic route. Winding through the inland mountains of Costa Rica, Route 2 is known for being one of the most beautiful drives in the entire country, but also one of its most dangerous. In fact, a section of Route 2 between Cartago and San Isidro is known as Cerro de la Muerte, or the Hill of Death, as its steep winding roads, poor visibility, and frequent rock falls can make it incredibly dangerous during poor weather conditions and at night. And since we were only willing to navigate the Hill of Death in the daylight, we'd have to get the drive started early. So we're about two miles into the hike now, I think. And from the reviews we read, a lot of people said, once you get towards the top of the mountain, you're probably not gonna get many good views, but we are getting close to the top of the mountain and look at these views that we got. If these aren't good, I don't know what is. Best view of the hike yet. Yeah. Oh man, I wish we had more time to enjoy it. I think the reason people say you don't get good views towards the top is because oftentimes there are low clouds. If we are two, three hours later in the day, we probably wouldn't have a view right now, but we really timed this right, I think. Glad we got on the trail early. I think we're coming up to the two mile mark here, which means we gotta be getting close to the summit. We've been walking through this really thick brush and then these are just here. <laughs> like how cool is that? Giant aloe plants. Yeah. We weren't expecting that. No starting to get overgrown again here. We've been seeing a lot of this in the last quarter mile or so, but there's also butterflies flying all over. Even though it's overgrown, it's still pretty scenic. This kind of came out of nowhere. I was not expecting this, but check this out. Oh, wow, yeah. What do you think? Oh my gosh. And you got flowers over to your left. This is a great view. And then look to the right. Wow. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this on camera at all, but we can see our breath when we breathe up here, which I know the temperature isn't cold enough. Like that happens all the time where we're from in the Midwest in the winter where you can see your breath when it's really cold, but it can't be less than 70 degrees or so right here. We can definitely see our breath. If any of you out there know why that is, let us know. It's starting to get a lot more humid. I think we're getting into the section of the trail that is frequently in the clouds because even though it's not actively raining, the trail is getting much more wet. The pace has come down, lots of mud. The last little bit of this hike to the summit, probably last half mile or so I'd say, it's gotten pretty steep and 
we're having to go pretty slow and we're still really out of breath. Lots of downed trees in this section. So you do have areas like this on the trail that are a little tricky. Gotta kinda use some climbing skills, but they're pretty few and far between. So we're starting to be able to see big patches of sky ahead. That's a good sign. Oh, I think we made it. Look above you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I had no idea. <laughs> I'm so happy. That was kind of anticlimactic. Didn't even realize we were here for the first 10 seconds. You're just catching your breath, huh? Yeah. Thank goodness for that sign. <laughs> <laughs> we do not read Spanish, but we're pretty certain that that says we've reached the summit or the yeah. peak, something along those lines. Doesn't look like there's much for views around here, so we probably won't be spending too much time here. Just long enough to scarf down a cliff bar and some water and start heading back. Yeah. All right, good job. Good job to you. Well, I would say this is a difficult hike. I would. I'd say it's the second or third hardest hike we've ever done. Cassava chips. Whatever these things are. And these. And cliff bars. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but we're definitely not taking it. Now to leave to uh, La Carilla y San Miguel. <laughs> Overall, it took about two and a half hours to hike 2.8 miles up the mountain, but we agreed that we probably could have done it in under two if we hadn't been filming. And since the hike back would involve more downhill hiking and less filming, we were hopeful that it would go much more quickly. Time to head back down the mountain. Skyler left his stick at the top, but thankfully we did not get too far. Here it took me long to realize I was missing something. Yeah, something that you're definitely going to need on the way down. Yes. Because look at this mud. Yeah. It does look like the clouds are starting to roll in. Thank goodness we're on our way down now. So far the hike down has been very muddy, but I think we're keeping a pretty good pace. It's much less strenuous. We're not breathing heavy like at all. But more muddy. Definitely more muddy. Definitely got to be careful. Yeah. You don't want to slip in the mud and fall off the edge of the mountain. I'd say coming down is easier, but also more dangerous. If we can maintain this pace the rest of the way back, we'll be back in an hour. But I have a feeling it's not going to be all like this. Lots of ferns in this section of the trail. Oh, I love fern gully sections. <laughs> yeah, we've reached the fern gully portion of the trail. <laughs> kind of steep, kind of muddy, but pretty leisurely. Yeah. Oh, wow, we got another awesome viewpoint up here. Oh my gosh. Check out this viewpoint. Haven't checked all trails in a while. I'm guessing we're about half a mile down from the summit. Yeah, yeah so even though we are in the clouds, you can still see the city very well. Yeah. Man, I feel like we are hiking this on the perfect day though. Yeah. We've had great views the whole way. It's nice and cool up here. We got in the clouds a little bit, but no rain. Even if it does rain, hopefully we'll be well over halfway down by the time it does. Yeah. This might change, but so far the trail down is significantly less strenuous. So I think that if somebody wanted to Go hike up to that point. Uh, you could go out and back on this side of it and it wouldn't be near as strenuous, but I also don't think you would see near as many great views along the way. We've reached our first nice flat part of the hike on yeah. this side. Yeah, this is a nice change. Another nice change about the hike back was that we spotted several red paint trail markers on the trees, which let us know we were on the right path back without having to constantly check our All Trails app. How low can you go? Ugh. All right, I made it. More graceful than me. Ugh, I didn't feel very <laughs> graceful. The good news, not only did we find another trail marker, but we found a nice view right next to it. This is another area that is just totally different from the rest of the hike. I love this area. So cool. Yeah, it's like you're in a different world. So sections of this trail going down do have this barbed wire fence directly to the left of you. So you want to be extra careful not to slip because if you were to slip and fall into that barbed wire, that would be bad news. I guess it'd be better than falling off the edge of a cliff, but it still would be far from good. Not paying attention. You could easily go off the edge. Yeah. 
Yeah, that'd be a bit of a fall. Good thing the barbed wire would stop you. I don't know, we're maybe a mile and a half to two miles down the mountain now, and we're starting to hear some running water. It almost sounds like a waterfall. You obviously know we've already seen a lot of waterfalls and plan on seeing a lot more while we're here in Costa Rica, but based on the sound of it, we might get to see one that we weren't expecting to see. Just a little stream. All right. Well, I'm glad I wore my waterproof socks right now. Jamie's gonna have to try to not walk in the water. Definitely doesn't compare to the waterfalls we saw yesterday, but still nice unexpected surprise. So on this side, you don't have views of the city, but you have views of this. So I think we were like somewhere up there, probably in the thick of those trees. I know initially we said there's not as good of views on this side of the loop, but we've really hit a section here where we got some really nice views for a pretty extended period of time. Yeah, these do not get old. Nope. It's nice that they're like scattered along the trail too. I think I might hear a car. Might just be wishful thinking now that we're closer. All right guys, we completed the loop. We made it back. Yeah. Well, we're not done yet. No. We still gotta hike the non-loop portion back to our vehicle, but we've definitely completed the hard part. High five. <laughs> yeah. So I think we only got a little over a half a mile to go now, and we just heard our first thunder. Thankfully, it did sound like it was a ways away. We definitely could still get rained on, but if we do, it would definitely suck, but we're very confident we're gonna get back in one piece. We are almost back to the car and look at these clouds. We are hearing some thunder. <sighs> the rain will be coming soon. <laughs> We've got to pick up the pace. Right. Yeah, I keep hearing that thunder. Yeah. At this point, I think we'd both rather be walking uphill than down. So pretty yeah. steep hill ahead, but that's okay. We're going to have to walk down like that. I know. One thing we didn't mention is that we didn't see any other people on our hike. Maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe we're crazy for hiking this trail when we did during the rainy season. I don't know, but thankfully everything went really well. That is our rental straight ahead. It is still there. There is a chicken under it, but <laughs> it's there. All right, that's great. Look at how pretty this chicken is. There's so many chickens here. As crazy as it sounds, the second we got back to the car, it started sprinkling. Yeah, I think, they, I think they said we got back just in time. All right, guys, so we thought we were making a really good pace. We thought we'd be back by noon or maybe one at the latest, but we didn't get back till two o'clock because we didn't get back to the car till two. We're not gonna be able to do the drive through the mountains. We're not gonna be able to go on the death hill because we would be driving through it in the dark, which sounds very unsafe from what I've read. We're hoping that we still might be able to drive that mountain road on the way back to San Jose, but we're really hoping you enjoyed this hike and we'll see you in Uvita. While it doesn't have the mountain views that you'll find along Route 2, the drive along Route 34 is pretty beautiful in its own right. Now because we did much of this drive in the dark and we were quite tired, we didn't film a whole lot of this drive, but we did still catch some pretty great views. Along the way we grabbed some delicious key lime pie and much needed coffee at Cafecitos and Oratina. We also stopped by an amazing fruit stand somewhere along Route 34 where we sampled and purchased some tropical fruits. With the end of daylight approaching, we just had to drop by La Fiesta del Morisco. I was just telling Jamie how awesome it would be if we could find a bar along the beach to catch sunset because sunset is in like 15 minutes and then we came along this place. Perfect. I know we couldn't have timed it much better. The beaches here are so different than what we're used to. They are dark beaches. Just gotta get our sunset drinks. We asked if they had any fresh juice here and they had a ton to choose from. I asked the waiter what his favorite was and he recommended pineapple juice with peppermint and I had never tried it before and it is delicious. After enjoying a couple drinks, along with our first beachfront sunset of the trip, we were back on the road. And after grabbing a quick dinner just outside of Dominical, we arrived at our Airbnb in the beautiful beach town of Uvita, where you can continue with us on our Costa Rican adventure by clicking here right now. Thanks for watching!